Hello everyone and welcome to the movie of What If Goku Trained Deku. It's crazy that we're at a point where there is a movie of the series. So if you guys have been enjoying the series then please make sure to like and subscribe hit the bell notification and enjoy the video. Do you know what the sad truth is? None of us aren't created as equals. I had to learn this lesson when I was a kid. There are people with more power than others. Sadly, I was a kid who was powerless, defenseless, quirkless. But things have changed ever since they came into my life, took me under their wing, and just genuinely believed in me. Now I will show you how I became the hero I am now. The story takes place a few days after the Broly movie. Goku and Vegeta were training on Beerus's planet, sparring with each other. Goku was in Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken X20 and Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. The Saiyans were landing hard blows on each other. Vegeta punches Goku in the face as Goku grabs Vegeta's arm and throws him back onto the ground. Vegeta jumps back up, flying towards Goku as he appears right behind him and kicks Goku on his arm. Goku jumped back as he was going to use a Kamehameha. Vegeta, seeing this, attempts to use a final flash. They both were pretty evenly matched until Wise stopped the fight because they were causing too much damage to the surrounding area. And the beam struggle would cause more damage Wise does not feel like fixing. Why did you stop of Wise? Vegeta shouted to the angel. Well Vegeta, your battle here was causing too much damage to the planet and I cannot have that. Wise responded to the saint. Vegeta grunted and turned away. Well, that was a fun fight, Vegeta. Goku said with a smile. Oh, just shut it clown. I wish I can find a new challenge. I want something new and interesting to happen when Goku says that. He disappears out of thin air, shocking Vegeta. What the hell happened to Kakarot? Vegeta shouted. Wise explains to Vegeta. Well, what I know is that from what I heard from my father is that Lord Zeno wanted to put Goku into one of the separate universes that aren't ruled by gods such as gods of destruction. When Goku made that wish of his, I guess Zeno and my father took it as a cue to send him. I don't think he knows what's going on, though. What? How come Kakarot gets to have all the fun? Vegeta shouts. Lord Zeno chose Goku. I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe he will send you two in the future. Wise tells the Saiyan. Fine, whatever. While he's gone, I'll get a new power and surpass that clown. A power that will differ from him. I will make my own. Vegeta clenches his fists in determination. Goku appears in a dark area. All he sees is darkness. Then suddenly a bright purple light figure manifested upon Goku. The figure taps Goku on the forehead and boom. Goku is ice guide into the world of my hero academia. Basically, he gets ice guide. Huh, what? Where am I? Is this Earth? But it doesn't feel like Earth. But it is. I'm confused. I was fighting Vegeta and now I'm in a random city. Not knowing what else to do, Goku tries talking to King Kai to get some help but there is no answer so he tried shouting for Wise but there was no response. All the civilians are looking at Goku in confusion, thinking he is crazy. With nothing else to do, Goku decides to go and explore. Goku flies around to understand where he is at but he has no clue. He notices how the energy of the people on this earth feels different from the ones on his earth. It feels like almost everyone's Kai is unique like there is another type of power. Goku gets very excited by this having a feeling he will meet a lot of powerful people. Goku is flying around until he sees someone causing a rampage. A giant villain is attacking and knocks down an electrical tower. Goku flies on down and catches it before the hero Death Arms had the chance to. People are wondering who the spiky hair guy in orange is. The hero Kamui would appear to try to stop the villain. The villain tried to swing, but that's when Goku appeared and caught his swing with his fingers. People are looking on in amazement. Hey you, what are you doing? You could've got these people hurt doing that. What? Go away. The villain tries to attack Goku, but he dodges with ease. Hey you, what are you doing? You need to stay back. The hero, Kamui Woods, trying to warn the guy. Don't worry, I can stop him. Goku tried going easy on the villain and punched him. But the villain cried out in pain on the floor with tears at how painful that punch was. Huh, that hurt. I tried going easy. Even Yamcha can take a punch like that. You call that easy. That hurt like hell. And what the hell is a Yamcha? The villain shouted at the Saiyan. Yamcha is my friend and I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be doing bad things so. Goku uses instant transmission to find a nearby potent energy source to possibly challenge to a fight. Kamui Woods was trying to stop Goku so he can question him but Goku was gone in an instant. Mount Lady didn't even get to do anything in this scenario. All the heroes were confused about who the guy in orange was, but the civilians were amazed. The whole incident was recorded on live television. Goku is becoming known around the city of Musutafu. Izuku mumbled out loud while writing in his journal and was wondering, who is that guy? He can fly and teleport. It also seems like he has super strength and quick reflexes and is also incredibly fast. Maybe he has more than one quirk. It's not odd, but in his case, it is because he has multiple. Hopefully, I can get to see more of him soon. 
After writing down every single bit of information he learned from the orange guy and headed his way to school. Izuku got bitch made like he did originally in canon from Bakugo. Goku's instant transmission leads to the number two hero Endeavor. Endeavor was startled by a man appearing right in front of him. Haha, sorry didn't mean to scare you there. I'm just looking for someone strong to fight. And it seems like you are very strong for a normal human. For a normal human, what? Who are you? Endeavor asked in an annoyed and angry tone. Hey, I'm Goku. So you wanna fight? Goku asked eagerly. You know what? Let's fight. I'll show you to not challenge the number two hero. A crowd appears to see Endeavor the number two hero. Hey it's getting crowded. Can you fly? We can take it to the sky. No, but I can use my flames to pseudo fly. Endeavor uses his flames to fly. Sweet. Let's fight. The two fighters are fighting in the sky. Endeavor is using his flames to try to keep up with Goku. Goku is working his way up in power to gauge out Endeavor and also have a good fight. Endeavor's flames are keeping Goku aware. Endeavor is getting very annoyed he isn't doing much. So he uses his flames to give a boost in his overall power on his strikes. This caught Goku off guard, causing Endeavor to land a decent blow to Goku. Goku was happy to see that and wanted to continue the fight. But Endeavor was exhausted. They have literally been going at it for an hour. But Endeavor feels defeated. He is thinking to himself there is someone else who is stronger than me. He might even be stronger than him. And I can tell he wasn't using his whole power. That bastard. Does he think that I'm so weak he didn't want to go all out? Well, I'll show him. I might not be number one but my son will surpass all might in this new guy. Hey, you. I don't know what your quirk is and how you are so strong, but I won't let you outdo me again and I will also outdo All Might. That guy reminds me of Vegeta. I wonder who this All Might guy is. He might be very strong. Endeavor flies away. There was a crowd watching and recording the whole thing on their phones. Some people live streaming it. It has been known that an orange guy was around town stopped a villain and defeated the number two hero. Back to Deku. Izuku's class is about to end. He is trying to figure out the new somewhat hero that appeared writing in his notebook until Katsuki Bakugo came in and made Izuku his bitch again as he does in canon. As he goes home, he hears something. When he turns around, he sees a sludge monster, so he screams and tries to run. Hey kid, don't try to run. I'm going to take your body so I can hide from him. The villain surrounds Izuku and tries to take over his body by shoving his sticky slime down his throat. Don't struggle. It will be easier for you if you don't fight back. It won't hurt after a minute, trust me. Just take it in and you will no longer feel anything. Izuku tries grabbing the sludge out of his mouth to no avail. While struggling, the boy is slowly losing consciousness. Goku felt a huge rise in Kai from someone in a minute after that he heard someone scream. The Saiyan uses his instant transmission technique while at the same time, All Might also appear from the sewers. They both see a boy being suffocated by a slime monster, so they both rush in and punch the monster simultaneously as All Might yells Texas SMAAASSSSHHH. Izuku sees an image of All Might and Goku before he passes out. All Might goes to get the villain contained and signs Izuku's book. Hello, my name is Goku. Nice to meet you. You seem very strong. Goku said to the hero. Hello Goku. Nice to meet you and thanks. I appreciate the help there. I am All Might. All Might reaches his hand out to shake Goku's. Goku sees the gesture and shakes his hand. Hi, I'm Goku. Earlier I fought a hero with fire powers and he mentioned you. He kind of reminds me of a friend I have back at home. Do you mean Endeavor? Why were you in a fight with him? The hero asked curiously. I was looking for a good challenge and he was the strongest person I found at the moment. I asked him if he wanted to fight and he agreed, but I can tell you are a lot stronger. You really beat Endeavor. You must have a lot of strength. Can't even imagine the look on his face. Ha ha ha. The hero imagines how it went down and Endeavor's reaction. So do you want to fight? Goku says with excitement in his voice. Thanks, but I don't do random fights. Maybe next time though, but I got to go now. The hero tries to leave but was interrupted. Common please. How about just sparing? Goku asks, begging with his hands clapped together. I would love to, but I can't right now. The hero replied, trying to leave before he detransforms any minute now. Is it because your power is about to go away? All Might was surprised to hear that statement. The hero is thinking to himself, what? Does he know? That can't be. That's when the hero asked, what do you mean by that? Well, I can sense that a lot of your Kai is leaking and I think it's coming from that spot in your stomach. That's where I feel it the most. All Might is now wondering who this guy is. He is thinking to himself, this Goku guy is saying that he can sense it and called it Kai, another word for energy. I should ask him some questions. So the hero asks, hey Goku, do you mind telling me about yourself? Well, my name is Goku. I like food and fighting. I am a Saiyan that was raised. And again, I like food and fighting. All Might wonders and asks, what's a Saiyan? And you were sent to Earth. So you're saying you're an alien? Yeah, I guess I am an alien. The Saiyan replies. The hero, not really buying his story says. And you expect me to believe all that? 
I will just show you with this technique Goku uses his long forgotten technique. What technique? Goku uses telepathy to show pieces of Goku's life and also the memories of how Goku was brought into the world. Holy shittt. Was all that real? You were just magically brought here all might asked in disbelief. Hee <laughs> hee. I don't really know myself. I was sparing with my friend from my earth and then I came here. All Might is not sure what to do. He is very lost and confused, but eventually composes himself. That's when Izuku wakes up from his dirt nap. Oh crap, I forgot about him. Oh, why hello young man. You are doing fine now. My new friend and I saved you. Izuku screams and gets excited and tries to get an autograph, but he looks to see that he has already done it. All Might wants to try to leave now because his power will fade any minute now. All Might turns to Goku and asks him to follow then leaps off. Goku looks at Deku. Well, nice to meet you. Welcome to part 2 of what if Goku trained Deku. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Goku proceeds to fly off as well. While in the sky, All Might and Goku hear someone screaming. They look back to notice that the same kid was holding onto dear life onto Goku's leg. All Might tells the kid to get off Goku, but Izuku said that if he lets go, he will die and he really wants to ask All Might a question. Not a smart move, kid. You shouldn't grab onto other people like that. Bang on the door until someone knocks on the door. Gotta go, see you on the flip side, the hero said to the boy. Wait, not yet, there's something I want to ask. The green-haired boy said, no, I have to leave. All Might said back, I have to know, can I ever hope to become a hero even without a quirk? I'm just a normal person with no special powers, nothing special about me, but I want to be the hero who can save people with a smile on my face, just like you. Can I hope to become someone like you? Asked the boy, hoping to get the answer he was hoping for. All Might turns his head back to look at the boy. Goku was curious about how this will turn out. As he was about to say something, the hero to transforms into his skinny form. Goku knew All Might's power was about to run out, but he was not expecting to see that. Izuku was freaking out. That's when All Might gives his depressing speech and crushes Izuku's dream, like in canon. Hearing them made Goku sad, so he said this. I don't think that's true. If you train hard enough, then you can become strong enough to be a hero. If you want, I can train you and teach you martial arts to help you become stronger, but it won't be easy. Goku said with a smile on his face. Don't get his hopes up. He will end up getting himself killed if he tries to become a hero without a quirk. Well, I don't have a quirk and I'm plenty strong. Your case is different Goku. What about you? What do you mean? I saw some of your memories, too. This made All Might silent. If Goku saw his memories, then the hero knows what the Saiyan is referring to but hearing this gives All Might an idea but he's not sure. Izuku was about to question Goku about how he does not have a quirk after seeing all the feats he has performed. But that's when a loud explosion is seen in the distance. All Might was wondering what that was until he realized that he no longer had the villain. Damn it, I must have dropped him by accident. Goku, the villain is no longer with me. I think the explosion was from him. I'm out of power for now. You need to stop him. Goku's expression becomes serious for a minute. Alright, grab onto me. Goku uses instant transmissions there with Izuku and All Might holding onto him. They teleported to see a spiky-haired blonde being held hostage by the sludge villain. Izuku recognizes the person being attacked and sees it's his childhood friend Bakugo. With no hesitation, he ran into action without thinking. He threw his book bag into the villain's eyes and tries to free Bakugo. Izuku thinks to himself, what am I doing? My legs started going on their own. What the hell are you doing Deku? Get the hell out of here. Bakugo shouted. No, I'm not just going to sit by and watch you get killed. I will save you. Now, let go of him you monster. Izuku tries his best to save Bakugo. Hearing this surprised both Goku and All Might. Goku wanted to see what would happen, and he was glad about what he saw. The will and determination from the boy. All Might thinks to himself that he has to do something. Goku rushes to pull Bakugo out of the villain and that is when All Might rushed in afterward. Punching the villain so hard that he changed the weather with low to mid difficulty. Goku is impressed to see the power of All Might even if it's slowly withering away. After the villain was defeated, reporters started flooding Goku and All Might, trying to ask them a bunch of questions. The heroes scolded Izuku while the other heroes were praising Bakugo for his quirk and bravery. All Might attempts to push the reporters to the side so he can have a chat with Goku to learn more about his situation and so he can power down into his skinny might form. So, you're from another universe. That's pretty wild. 
The hero says, attempting to make conversation. I don't think so. I've been to other universes before. Like this one time a dude went to the future to steal my body and destroy my friend from the future universe. Goku explaining the Goku Black Arc. So, do you know anything about this world? The hero asks, just from what I saw from your memories. Also, I have something for that injury of yours. It can heal any wound and looking at yours, this will help. You just have to eat it. That's when Goku pulls out a pouch full of senzu beans. All Might was skeptical about eating beating it but goes for it, anyway. When he eats it, he drops to the floor and feels a sharp pain in his wound as he grasps his hands on it. After the momentary pain, he felt 100% better as if he was in his prime, which surprised the hero. Now he can maintain his buff form 100% of the time and could waste less energy using the remainder of one for all. All Might thanked Goku. The hero has a feeling he could trust Goku from seeing each other's memories, even if only if he saw bits and pieces, especially after eating that senzu bean. That's when All Might remembers Izuku for a second and asks Goku. Hey Goku, can you use your teleport ability to go to that green-haired kid? I want to ask him something. Goku agrees, so he uses his instant transmission ability. Izuku was heading home until he heard someone shout, DKU. The green-haired boy looked back to see it was Bakugo. Listen, don't think you can look down on me because you tried to save me. I would never ask a weakening like you to ever help me. You are just a quirkless loser who couldn't even cut it as a rent-a-cop. Bakugo storms off as he shouts, you didn't help me. Izuku thinks to himself, what's his problem? I guess he's right, though. Guess it's back to giving up on my dreams. But from what that other guy said, Goku, right. Yeah, Goku, from what he said, maybe there's hope for me. I should take him up on his offer next time I see him. That's when Goku and All Might appear right in front of Izuku, freaking the boy out. All Might does one of his iconic All Might pose and says, I am here. And Goku says, hi I'm Goku. Young man, I want to talk to you. I want to thank you and discuss the question you asked me earlier. If you hadn't run into that fight, I would have been a bystander. No, I'm pretty sure it's my fault anyways. If I haven't distracted you then you probably wouldn't have dropped the villain. The boy says as he bows to apologize. I'm not finished. When I saw this scared quirkless kid rush in to save his friend, it inspired me to act too. What each genuine hero has in common is that their bodies move on their own as that's what happened to you. As the hero says to the boy, causing him to cry tears of hope and joy. That's when Goku chimes in and says, don't forget I want to train you too. Izuku is just sobbing, seeing that two powerful people believe in him. So, do you want to accept my awesome power? The hero shouted in excitement. This got Goku's attention, as he was curious about this development. This confused Izuku as he did not know what All Might meant, so he asks, what do you mean? I wasn't born with this power. It is a torch, passed down to me from generation to generation. The reason for such a secret is that people need to believe that their symbol of peace is a natural born hero. And you're next. I can give you my abilities. The hero told the boy. This is a lot to process. Izuku says as he spouts on theories about All Might's quirk. Stop nerding out. My power is called one for all. One person improves the power and then passes it on to another and grows as it's passed along. It's the power that allows me to save those that are in need. Why would you want to give a power like that to me, though? The boy asked in confusion. You may just be a scrawny, quirkless kid, but you have the heart of a hero. I saw it when you saved that kid. All right, all might. I will do it, Izuku said, while charging his fists up. An hour has passed. All Might asks Goku has anywhere to stay. Goku says no, but I might have an idea. He'll tell you about it later. But I want to take over Izuku's training. With my help, I think he will be strong enough to handle your quirk. Goku explains the training he will put Izuku through. All Might thinks that's way more intense than what he planned but agrees to go along with his plan as he will also set the preparations for it. Alright, he'll meet you tomorrow with young Midoriya Goku leaves to go look for something. After some looking, he comes across it. Goku meets a lady as she introduces herself as Kami. Hello, are you the guardian of Earth? Goku asks, yes, I am. May I ask who you are and what you're doing up here? The guardian is curious that someone has found her lookout. Goku introduces himself to the deity and told her, well, I was sent here from another universe. On my Earth, there was also a lookout like this one, so I wanted to know if there was one here as well. I'm also looking for somewhere to stay and I was wondering if I can stay here for a while. I will train a boy and I would like to see how strong he will become. Kami reads Goku's thoughts and intentions to see that his intentions are pretty pure, so she agrees. Goku asks the god if there's a hyperbolic time chamber so she explains that there is and one day will be equal to one year and you don't age in there, but Goku will have to get his own food if he wants to use it. Goku thanks Kami for the help. 
The next day, Izuku wakes up and gets ready for school. When school ends, he goes home to see his mom. In Ko Midoriya, cooking lunch. Hey, mom. Hey, sweetie. How is school? The mother asked, inquiring about her son's day. Izuku looked at his mother with a smile and said, You know, same old, same old. Oh yeah, I wanted to let you know I will do some training soon. Alright honey, just stay safe and don't overdo it. Inko replied, wanting her boy to stay safe and sound. While the two were talking, Goku appears right in front of Izuku, scaring both the boy and the mother. Hey, Izuku, I am here to talk about your training. Inko is freaking out, wondering who is this stranger that appeared right in front of them. That's when Izuku explains Goku will take over his training to prepare for the UA entrance exams. Alright, Izuku. Well, nice to meet you, Goku. Would you like to stay for lunch? The loving mother asks. When Goku heard lunch was being offered, he smiled in delight and said, I would love to. After lunch was served, Goku and Izuku went to talk about their training. With Inko joining in, she is Izuku's mother and wants to know what he will do, so she wouldn't have to worry as much. Goku's plan was to give Izuku a similar training he did when he was a kid. Alright, so what type of training will I be doing? The green-haired boy asks. Goku tells them what his training of consists of. All of it was possible because of All Might's help. Izuku will wake up early in the morning and Goku will take him to a nearby island to deliver milk while skipping to everyone there. Then he will get sent back home to get ready for school. After school, he will have lunch and then go to a farmer to help plant crops and plow the fields with his bare hands. After that, he will have to do construction work with only the use of handheld tools, not power tools. Once that's all over, the last thing he would have to do is swim around a lake and do 10 laps. After the training, what would be next is teaching Izuku martial arts and fighting techniques. While doing all of that, he will wear a 50-pound turtle shell that Goku got custom-made with the help of All Might as the weight will increase gradually over time, and Izuku will have to wear that every day, for the whole time for the next 8 months. Izuku and Inko gave a shocked expression as their jaws dropped. They are both thinking that it's going to be one hell of a training. The next day, Izuku woke up early in the morning to start his training. He goes to meet up with Goku at the beach to see All Might and Goku fighting each other. The boy thought something happened, so he got closer to see that it was just a friendly match and Goku is giving him tips on improving his fighting techniques because all the hero does is punch things. After some friendly advice, Goku looked at All Might and said, Alright, I want to see how strong you really are, so go all out. No holding back. All Might looks at Goku and tells him, Just don't go easy on me. The powerhouses look at each other, and Goku gave a smile and a confirmation. When the two finished their sparing match, Goku and All Might saw Izuku watching so they go to greet him. Hello young Midoriya, good morning to you. Before you start your training with Goku, there's another thing you should know. The hero tells the boy. Goku chimes in and tells Izuku, it's about me. I would like to share my memories with you. You can share your memories. What is your quirk, anyway? The boy is curious about Goku's abilities. I don't have one, Goku says as he shows Izuku parts of his memories. Oh my god, what the hell? You're from another universe and an alien. That's more shocking than finding out about one for all. This shocks the boy, having so many questions come up in his mind. Do you think I will ever be as strong as you? When I saw your memories, I noticed how insanely strong you have become during your life. So, will I ever be as strong as you? Izuku asks, similar to the question he asked All Might not too long ago. Yes, I do. You can become as strong as me or even stronger if you work hard enough. You just have to see and believe in your own potential. Goku says with a smile, understanding how the boy may feel. Thank you Goku, I really appreciate that. I will work hard and be the best hero I can be. With a firm determination, getting hyped up. During the 8 months of training, Goku and All Might aren't slacking off either. All Might trains with Goku to get stronger and Goku is training to learn Ultra Instinct. While training with All Might, he notices the potential for growth within the hero, so the Saiyan is eager to see how far he can push his limits. Izuku notices quickly the benefits of the training he's been going through. He notices how strong he's becoming, but he wants to continue to push himself. So during his free time when he's not doing his normal training and studying, Izuku goes out to the beach to pick up trash and clean the beach. He doesn't just notice his own improvements, he knows that his all-time favorite hero, All Might has majorly improved himself. After 8 months of training, All Might and Izuku meet up while Goku is training in the hyperbolic time chamber, trying to perfect Ultra Instinct. Goku has improved during the 8 months, learning Ultra Instinct Omen and even tapping into it at will. But it wasn't to the Saiyan's satisfaction. A lot of his time was mainly training Izuku and All Might, so he wants a chance to focus on making himself stronger. All Might and Izuku chill at the beach and start talking. 
Oh wow, young Midoriya, you have improved dramatically, more than I could ever help you achieve. That training must have paid off, the hero said with joy for his future successor. Thank you all might, but I can see you have gotten stronger yourself. I don't think I have seen you turn into that skinny form for a long time now. Izuku has been noticing. Yeah, that's because Goku gave me this magical bean called a Sensu Bean and it healed my injuries. The hero tells the boy. The two continued to have a friendly conversation, and then the topic of their training came up. All Might mentions the training he's been doing with Goku. I think it's time young Midoriya, the hero asks. The hero pulls out a piece of his hair, looks at Izuku, and says, eat this. Izuku was dumbfounded. He was like, bro, what the fuck? In order for me to transfer my power to you, you need to ingest a part of my DNA. All Might explains to the boy. Oh okay, I understand now, but are you sure you still want to give me your quirk? You are fully healed and stronger than ever, so there is no reason to give me your power anymore and now I'm strong myself, even without a quirk. Well, yes, that may be true. There is no reason for me to give you my power anymore, but I still want to. Eight months ago I saw a timid, skinny, shy, weak, scared, the hero continues. You're really rubbing dirt in my wounds, aren't you all might? Haha. Haha -ha, yeah, you were those things. But now I see a young man with a lot of potential to be the greatest hero. I even saw it when you tried to save that one kid from the sludge villain a couple of months ago. I believe you will be the greatest hero of all time. There is no doubt about it, and I believe you'll be able to handle a good bit of the power. As the hero pats his successor's head, Izuku was crying because he wasn't expecting to hear all that, but that pushes his drive further to improve himself and help others. Thank you All Might, I really appreciate that, but do I really have to eat your hair though? That's just kind of weird. The boy was curious, not wanting to eat his hair. Well, you can drink my blue. Alright, never mind, he'll take the hair. Izuku quickly eats the hair but feels nothing. You're going to have to wait till the hair is ingested to use one for all. Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of what if Goku trained Deku. If you enjoy the video then please like and subscribe for more content in the future. Throughout the months, the villain known as All for One has been monitoring All Might lately. He notices the hero has been doing hero work more frequently lately and while doing some more investigation, the villain discovered that the hero's injury is completely healed. As a successor, he uses a red aura to multiply his strength and has been training with someone who is immensely stronger than himself. There are too many things happening that could cause All for One's future endeavors to fail. This pisses the villain off, but he will figure something out. All Might has transferred his quirk, one for all, to Izuku Midoriya, becoming the ninth user of the quirk. Alright, I'm excited to see what you will do with this quirk. By the way, Goku told me he will pick us up so we can do some training, but we will do it together. Izuku is wondering what he will be getting into so he asks, Alright, neat, do you know what kind of training we will do? In a confused tone, the hero says, Yeah. We will train in another dimension for a year, in a day. Izuku didn't really understand what the hero meant by that so he says, I'm not really sure what you mean. Can you please explain? All Might wasn't really sure how to respond. It was a concept he was having a hard time coming to grasps with. I'm not really sure. I stopped questioning these things a few months ago. Now I just go along with it. Well, I can't really blame you. Learning about aliens, gods, time travel, dragon balls. Hell, there are even intelligent dinosaurs in his world. There were too many crazy things I saw in his memories. But hey, I'm grateful for that. I'm happy I got to learn more about these things in Goku's life. After what you two have been doing for me, all I've been is grateful since you both came into my life. I don't think I could ever come this far without you guys. The boy confesses, giving the two a very heartwarming moment, and I'm grateful to have you as a successor. And I'm pretty sure Goku is happy to have you as a student. The hero says to the boy, making the moment even more heartwarming. While we have this time together, let me teach you this technique that Goku taught me. But be warned, if you use more power than your body could handle, you can severely injure yourself or die. Now, time to show you the Kaioken. All Might pulls out the Kaioken, even going up to times 5. Goku told me he was surprised I could handle this much power. He said that when he first did the training to learn the Kaioken, the most he could have done at the time was times 4 and was hospitalized after. The number one hero mentions giving him a confidence boost. Oh my god, All Might. That's amazing. This would be the first time you taught me anything. The green-haired boy tells the hero. 
Haha, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I had a plan for your training but Goku's was better and it shows. But that's not the only thing you'll be learning. I believe this could also help you master one for all because the two are pretty similar. Also, this is beneficial to me because if I lose the embers, I still have something to help people. This gives All Might hope that even without his quirk, he can still be the hero everyone needs. Don't think it's the same, though. From my experience with using Kaioken and One for All, Kaioken is a power multiplier. But One for All is more like an additive or amplifier since the quirk grows through generations of users. So be careful how you use the two. The hero says to make sure Izuku doesn't kill himself in the future because of it. Goku eventually comes out of the time chamber after training inside there for a couple of months. He searches for the Kai of Izuku and All Might to see that they are with each other. Goku teleports there to see All Might teaching Izuku the Kaioken. This makes him happy seeing their bonding time. And this makes Goku think back to the time he was training Gohan in the time chamber. Yo guys, Goku says with a smile, getting the attention of the two. When Izuku sees Goku, he runs up to him so he can show him the technique he just learned from All Might. Hey Goku, look what I can do. Kaioken, I got the hang of it, but it causes a lot of strain. That's awesome. You've come a long way. I can sense you have a lot of power. Did you get one for all? The curious Saiyan wonders. Yeah I did. I think I should be able to use it now. Izuku uses the power of one for all and channels it into his arm to swing at Goku. That's when the Saiyan dodges with ease and grabs the boy's arm to prevent him from causing severe damage. You are really strong now, but if you focus all that energy into one place, you will hurt yourself pretty bad. Try using one for all through your whole body and go little by little to see how much you can use. Goku offers this advice so Izuku wouldn't have to cause unnecessary damage to his body. Izuku takes this advice and develops full cowling that very same day. He tries to use small percentages of the quirk and work his way up as per Goku's advice. Izuku thinks to himself, this is amazing. I can go up to 30% without causing strain in my body. All Might is right. It sort of is like the Kaioken in a way but they are also very different from each other. Alright guys you ready? Let's go train for a year. The Saiyan is pumped up to get in more training and now has sparring partners. Goku uses instant transmission to take everyone to the lookout to where Izuku and All Might meet Kami. They all would enter the hyperbolic time chamber. All Might and Izuku would notice how heavy they feel. They are having some trouble moving about. Goku turns towards All Might and Izuku and his expression becomes serious. Alright guys, I will not go easy on you anymore. We will be here for a year and for that year, I will help you become very powerful. It will not be easy. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan to show an example of what they will be working towards. After that he transforms into Super Saiyan 2, then 3, God, Blue, and Ultra Instinct. Seeing this power up close amazed Izuku and All Might. They were both astonished. This fuels Izuku's passion to get stronger and be the best he can be. During the whole year of training, All Might and Izuku would learn about Kai control. The hero is not really interested in learning energy-based movesets but is interested in a few things such as increasing his power with Kai and Flying, thinking those will definitely be useful. Goku was interested to see that Izuku's Kai is green. During their time there, they would train their bodies and minds and sometimes goof around to have some fun from time to time. Izuku tries to learn as much as possible. He asks Goku to teach him the techniques that he uses so Goku obliges. Izuku would learn all of Goku's movesets such as the Kamehameha, Instant Transmission, Spirit Bomb, Flying, and even created some of his own techniques. Sometime during the Kai control training, Izuku would have reactions. Due to the amount of energy he is creating within his body, one for all would store and amplify the energy he's creating. His senses would go out of control which causes blackouts to happen so Goku and All Might would try to train Izuku to release the amounts of energy he's creating with one for all amplifying his Kai. They don't just train their bodies but they also do train their minds. Ever since Master Roshi reminded Goku of the lesson of martial arts, mastering martial arts to conquer yourself. That's when Goku remembers the other lessons from his masters and makes sure to teach them those same lessons. Too much wasted movement. That's why you run out of breath quickly. Master Korin, be as tranquil as the heavens, and as quick as a bolt from the blue. Kami, wanna be the best in the universe? Then you gotta train not just your body, but also your spirit. King Kai, don't allow your mind to control your movement. Every part of your body must judge and act on its own. Wise, during the final months in the time chamber, something would happen to Izuku. The boy was sparring with all might. Izuku is able to use 100% of one for all. He tried stacking the Kaioken on top of the quirk to boost his overall power. 
Izuku's plan wasn't working to what he expected. When he tries stacking the Kaioken on top of one for all, it causes immense strain for the boy as he drops to the floor and passes out. That's when All Might picked him up and put him on a bed so he can rest. When Izuku wakes up, he remembers what happened and plans to work on the technique in the future. Goku and All Might sense the power that Izuku was displaying and they both were pretty amazed. All Might was especially surprised because even though he may be stronger than Izuku in base strength, but when Izuku uses one for all, that's a different story and now with the Kaioken, he is even more powerful. Izuku and All Might see Goku improving on Ultra Instinct. Each time Goku transforms into that form, Izuku and All Might can't help but feel a calmness to it and it also terrifies them. After the full year of training, they all come out of the time chamber stronger than ever before. All Might reaches a power level up to 600k and Izuku reaches a power level around 450k in base strength. They both notice how different they feel when they came out of the chamber. They're both stronger than ever. That was one hell of a year. Look at these gains. All Might starts flexing this new gains he achieved throughout the year. Izuku couldn't help but laugh. Goku with a smile on his face tells Izuku and All Might, that was fun. You two are very strong now. So what do we do now Goku? Izuku asked, wanting to know what's next. I'm hungry. All Might and Izuku drop to the floor, dumbfounded, as Goku's stomach rumbles really loud. All Might gets the idea to go to a buffet so Goku can eat all he wants and not drain his wallet. Hey let's go out to eat. I know this really good buffet and it's on me. Goku starts drooling to the floor hearing the subject of food so the Saiyan smiles and accepts this invitation saying, Hey yes please. All three go out to eat and have a good time. Goku basically ate the whole place out of business, leaving Izuku and All Might dumbfounded. They couldn't believe how much Goku can eat. As Goku is eating out at the restaurant, Izuku and All Might try to get some food for themselves before Goku can suffocate it. All Might is really thankful now he chose a buffet over a normal restaurant as he couldn't imagine the bill. After eating, the three part ways. Goku goes back to the lookout to do some light training in the meantime and All Might goes home to get some rest. Izuku teleports home using instant transmission by focusing on his mother's Kai. And Ko freaks out, still not getting used to that. But she wasn't expecting it to be her son. Izuku you scared me. Where have you been for the past day and how can you teleport now? Hey mom, sorry about that. I have been training in this room called the hyperbolic time chamber for a whole year since yesterday. It's a room in another dimension where you can train for a whole year in a day. I still don't really understand the mechanics of it. And for being able to teleport now, I learned it from Goku. And Ko did not know what to make of that. She was lost on what he meant by he was training for a whole year since yesterday as for nothing Izuku said made any sense to her at all. Alright, nothing you said made any sense, but are you hungry? I can make you something to eat if you've been training for a whole year yesterday. Even though that still doesn't make any sense. Inko offers, but Izuku refuses after already going out to eat at the buffet with Goku and All Might after leaving the time chamber. The boy tells his mother, No thanks, I appreciate it but I already went out to eat after my training before I came home. Alright honey, but if you need anything, just let me know. Inko tells her son as she gives her a warm and loving smile. Izuku appreciates the gesture so he smiles back and tells her, Thank you mom, I appreciate everything you do for me. After taking a long needed shower after being gone for a whole year, Izuku hops on his bed and starts planning the next two months of training and studying for the UA entrance exams. He also gets out his notebook and lists everything he learned in the past year and also writes down any possible future techniques he's thinking of making. Hello everyone and welcome to part 4 of What If Goku Trained Deku. If you've been enjoying the series so far then make sure to like and subscribe for more videos in the near future. I hope you enjoy and have a good time. One day, Izuku and Goku were sparring at the beach. Izuku was able to clean the place up on his own, especially since his training in the hyperbolic time chamber. There was a girl who was walking by the park. Usually the place is littered with trash but she noticed it was spotless. The girl was pretty amazed to see how beautiful the place looked without trash everywhere. While staring off into the distance, the girl saw three people fighting each other in the sky. She couldn't really see them due to how fast they were but she could make out blurs and can feel the impact of each blow they create. Izuku launches a Kamehameha at Goku but the Saiyan avoids it using by instant transmission. 
teleporting behind Izuku, but he uses instant transmission himself to narrowly avoid Goku's punch. That's when All Might tries to rush in to attack Goku from the back with Kaioken times 15 but Goku instinctively dodges and elbow punches the hero in the stomach where his wound used to be. Izuku teleports right behind Goku and launches a Detroit Kamehameha. The green energy blast wraps itself with the lightning of one for all as it launches towards the direction of Goku. This caught Goku off guard, but the Saiyan was able to instinctively dodge the attack. Goku decides to take things up a notch. He screams very loud as a golden aura starts surrounding him. Goku has transformed into a Super Saiyan. Izuku smiled, hoping the Saiyan would take them more seriously. They both launched two massive Kamehamehas at each other. Izuku tried using 100% of one for all and even tried stacking Kaioken even though it was causing the boy a lot of strain still, but Goku's beam was still able to overtake Izuku's. Before the energy beam engulfed Izuku, Goku teleports to Izuku and disperses the energy way. Goku takes Izuku to the ground and they decide to relax, including All Might. The hero bought some sandwiches for the trio to eat and enjoy with each other's company. Goku senses someone staring at them. He turns back to see a girl looking directly at them, not really understanding what she might want. Goku assumes that the girl might be hungry so he offers her a sandwich to eat as well. Hey you there, the one that's watching us. Are you hungry or something? Here, have a sandwich. The Saiyan offers the girl one of the sandwiches. The girl is confused but decides to take one. She introduces herself but also does get excited to meet All Might. Um, alright. Thank you. Sorry to impose myself. My name is Momoye Yarazu. I was walking by and I noticed how the beach was clean compared to now it normally is. Then I saw all of you fighting in the sky and couldn't help but watch. It's okay. My name is Goku. Do you want to fight with us too? Goku asks the girl eagerly. Izuku and All Might couldn't help but laugh at Goku's antics. Momo gives a chuckle and says yeah. No thanks. From seeing your fight, I'm pretty sure I will get one shot if I try to join in. All Might gets up and introduces himself to the girl as he does one of his classic All Might poses. Momo gets giddy meeting the number one hero and shaking his hand. I it's very nice to meet you All Might. It's an honor to meet the number one hero. All Might notices the nervousness of the girl so he says, don't need to be nervous. Nice to meet you too, young lady. Would you care to join us? Goku already offered you a sandwich. Momo obliges as she does not want to refuse the number one hero so she sits down on the picnic blanket with the trio and takes a bite of her sandwich. Hey my name is Izuku Midoriya, nice to meet you. Izuku smiles as he reaches for a handshake until he realizes he was talking to a girl and froze up. While eating her sandwich, Momo responds back, saying, Hi there Izuku, nice to meet you too. So may I ask why you guys were fighting anyways? Izuku in a nervous tone tells the girl, Goku and All Might were training me so I can prepare for the UA entrance exams. We were working on our fighting skills and techniques together. Momo gave Izuku her full attention when she heard him mention that he was preparing for the UA entrance exams. No way, I'm going to UA also, but I'm recommended so I don't have to take the entrance exams. But why don't you get a recommendation also? I'm pretty sure All Might could write you one if he wanted to. Izuku knew that students could get recommended but never thought to realize that All Might could have just recommended him so Izuku turned to the hero's direction and asked him, Yeah All Might, why not write a recommendation letter? Well, to be honest, young Midoriya, that's because I forgot that was an actual thing. Izuku and Momo dropped to the floor, dumbfounded. It's alright, I think it's better that way. Plus it wouldn't be a challenge at all if I gotten without earning my place. As Izuku says that, he looks far off into the distance of the ocean view, thinking about how his future will turn out. Goku is just sitting there, enjoying all the sandwiches left. Is there more? I'm still hungry. Yeah there should be more left in the picnic basket. Go ahead and grab as much as you want. All Might tells the Saiyan, accounting for the fact that Goku eats a lot. Goku looks inside the basket to see there's no more sandwiches so with a sad face. He tells the hero, hey All Might, there is no more food. How? There are 40 sandwiches in there. Wait, did you eat them all, Goku? The hero was stunned. All Might knew the guy could eat but he wasn't expecting all the sandwiches to be gone already. Awa oh, what? All the sandwiches are gone. Tom and Goku, you could have at least saved a couple for the rest of us. But I was told that I can grab as much as I want. So are there more? I'm still hungry. Everyone dropped to the sand because of how dumbfounded they were. Momo, not really knowing anything about Goku or his biology asks the Saiyan, How are you still hungry when there were 40 sandwiches in there? How did you even eat 40 sandwiches in such a short time frame? Goku with a sad smile tells the girl with sadness and disappointment in his heart. The sandwich was very yummy so I wanted more and ate more, but now there's no more and I'm still hungry. All Might sighed as he said, well, I'll just order us some pizza then. I'll make sure to buy a couple boxes for you, Goku, so you don't eat our share. Can I get one with pineapple? The Saiyan asks eagerly. Sure thing Goku. Wait, did you just say? 
pineapple, All Might looks at Goku with shock. Usually weird food combos are common in Japan, but pineapple? Come on, no one likes pineapple on pizza. And if you do, we all will pray for you. Goku looks at All Might as he gives the hero a smile and a hug, thanking the hero for his generosity. While waiting for the pizza, Goku and All Might were sparing while Izuku and Momo were having a conversation with each other. They ask each other about their plans for Yue and they ask about each other's quirk. Without giving the true origins of Izuku's quirk and one for all, he tells the girl that his quirk is called Superpower and it stores and enhances the energy he creates to use attacks and techniques or enhance his stats overall. Half an hour has passed. While the two were talking, they heard someone calling out to Tashinori Yagi and had a bunch of pizza boxes with him. Is there a Tashinori Yagi? I have an order of 50 pizzas here and ready. Momo and Izuku both look at each other after hearing 50 pizzas. They didn't expect All Might to order that much, but from seeing the bottomless pit that is named Sun Goku, they realize it was probably a good idea to do so, so they can at least have some slices to themselves. Goku smelled the pizza so he teleports right in front of the pizza guy with drool slobbering down his mouth as he takes the pizza straight from the pizza guy and teleports in front of Momo and Izuku so he can eat with them. Yeah, that's me. How much will it cost? All Might goes up to the pizza guy to pay for the order. And the hero gives the delivery driver a fat tip. The delivery driver was awestruck to meet All Might so he just grabbed the money and muttered some incoherent words like any fanboy. They all enjoy their food and have a good time hanging out with each other. Momo is starting to feel more comfortable around the trio as she finds them endearing. She is also a little bit excited that she is hanging around the number one hero. As the food is about to be finished, All Might has to tend to his hero duties, so he leaves, not before wishing Izuku good luck and gives the boy a wink. Izuku knew what he meant so he got flustered but Momo was confused. Once Goku finishes inhaling his share of the pizza, the Saiyan goes off with the hero because he wants to see if there are any strong bad guys, leaving the two teenagers alone together. After some time passes, Momo has to make her leave. She wasn't expecting to be out as long as she was but she was enjoying her time spent. Before Momo leaves, she asks, Hey can I get your number so we can talk some time? Yeah, sure, I would love to. Izuku smiles as they both switch phones, inputting each other's numbers. That's when our main character realized he just talked to a girl and got her number on the same day. Hey, I can walk you home if you want so you don't have to walk alone. Momo took Izuku up on that offer so they left to drop her off. If All Might was watching right now, he would definitely be proud of the man Izuku is becoming. After that day, Izuku and Momo would start texting each other pretty often. During the next month before the entrance exams, Izuku would be training whenever he's not at school or he would text and hang out with Momo. Some time had passed until it was the day before the exams. Momo texted Izuku and asked him if he wanted to hang out and Izuku said sure. He went up to Inko and told her, Hey mom, I will be going out for a while. Alright honey, are you going to be training with Goku again? Inko asked, wondering what her son will be up to. Izuku corrects his mother and tells her, No, not today. I will be hanging out with a friend today so I'll be late home. Okay Izuku, just make sure to wear protection. I don't want to have any grandkids anytime soon. Izuku gets flustered when Inko says that. He started thinking about all the dirty things a teenage boy would think of. What? Why would you think of something like that? A flustered Izuku asks. Mama Midoriya isn't a dumbass. She may be pretty pure, but she's not an idiot. Well I'm no fool honey. I was a teenager once too. I know you're going to see a girl. Look how nice you're dressed. You don't wear nice clothes like that if you aren't trying to impress. Izuku blushes as he shouts. It isn't like that. We are just friends after all. So you admit you're hanging out with a girl. Izuku's face becomes a cherry red and he pauses as he decides to use instant transmission and teleports to All Might to get out of this situation he's in. Izuku teleports to All Might to hang out for a bit before hanging out with Momo. Hello young Midoriya, nice to see you again. Why are you dressed so nice? Are you going on a date with that Momo girl? Izuku shakes his hands around as he says no no no, it's nothing like that I swear. We are just hanging out. As friends, we are friends, just friends. You ha, sure thing young Midoriya, whatever you say. Well, here, have this for your non-date. All Might pulls out his wallet and gives him 20,000 yen. Izuku looks at All Might with surprise and asks, 20,000 yen? I can't accept this. Please take back your money. The hero gives his classic All Might laugh. It's alright young Midoriya, I insist. Go have a fun time with that girl and make sure to send me some pictures. Izuku reluctantly took the money and thanked the hero. The boy then uses instant transmission and teleports to Momo's location. She was waiting there early at the mall. Momo didn't really expect Izuku to teleport right in front of her so she gets frightened. Hey there, I didn't expect you to be here this early. I thought I was going to end up at your house so I can pick you up. Why are you here 30 minutes early anyways? Izuku asks the girl because his main plan was to teleport nearby her house so he can knock and not interrupt her. 
Momo blushes and stutters. Not knowing what to do or say, comes up with a thought and says, why teleport to me 30 minutes early? Izuku also gets flustered so he says well, to be honest, I just wanted to see you, you know. Momo turns red as hell so she turns away from Izuku's sight and gives a cute light smile. Anyways, you're here now. I bought us some tickets so we can watch a movie together, if you want to, that is. Of course, I would love to, Momo. What movie will we be watching anyways? I picked Thor, Love and Thunder. I thought you might like to watch it. You're into superhero movies. I would have never thought. Well not really. But I thought this movie would be good to watch before you go to the entrance exams tomorrow. Oh yeah, honestly, I forgot that it was tomorrow. How can you forget? I thought you wanted to be a hero. I do. It's just that with all the training I've been doing to prepare, it just got over my head. Well I can't really blame you. I have only known you for about a month and it surprises me how active you, Goku, and All Might are, but hey at least, I have no doubt you'll pass. Thank you. Do you want to go to the concession stand? I can get us some popcorn and snacks. Sure thing. Momo pulls out her purse but Izuku stops her. No, no, put your money away. You already bought us these tickets, let me buy the food. I think that's fair after all. This made the girl happy, since she's pretty rich, it's usually expected that she would pay but seeing this brings a smile to the girl's face. Hey everyone, this is part 5 of what if Goku trained Deku. If any of you have been enjoying the series so far then make sure to give a like and subscribe for more videos down the line. I hope everyone enjoys and has a good time. The next day was the UA entrance exams. Izuku woke up early in the morning so he could get in some training. The boy uses instant transmission and teleports to Goku to see that he is meditating. Izuku decides to join Goku and they meditate until Goku gets up. Goku noticed Izuku earlier. But he wanted to continue his meditation. Hey there Izuku, how are you doing? Izuku gets out of his meditative state and responds to Goku. I'm doing alright. I wanted to get in some training before I hang out with Momo later. Trying to make conversation, Goku asks the boy, did you have fun yesterday? All Might told me you went to see a friend. Yeah I did. I had a great time. Thanks for asking. Izuku said to Goku as he got in a fighting pose. Some time passes and Izuku is getting ready for the entrance exams. Before he leaves, the boy receives a message telling the boy to meet up by the school. Izuku uses instant transmission and teleports right in front of Momo. Izuku teleports right in front of the girl, scaring her. Hey Momo, you wanted to see me? Jesus Christ, I don't think I'll ever get used to that. Anyways I wanted to give you something as a good luck charm. Momo saw a Buddhist wristband while they were at the mall yesterday so she decided to buy it as a gift. Really, thank you very much. I appreciate the gift. Now I feel bad, I don't have anything for you. Izuku gives the girl a smile and puts the bracelet on. Good luck out there Izuku. You better pass. I want you to be there with me when hero studies start. Izuku walks up to the entrance exams until he hears someone shout. Get the fuck out of my way, Deku. He looks back to see Katsuki Bakugo. Izuku doesn't get scared because he has built up his confidence over the months. Oh, hey Kachin. It's been a while hasn't it? Get out of my way or else I will burn you to a crisp. Bakugo says as he walks past Izuku. Izuku doesn't act like a bitch this time as he did in the cannon and just ignores him. He proceeds to go inside until trips, but he was able to catch himself by flying. Oh hey there, looks like you caught yourself. I was about to use my quirk to help you but it seems like I don't have to anymore. It would be bad luck if you fell before the exams. Isn't it all nerve-wracking? The boy thanks the girl and responds by saying, Yeah it is, I appreciate you trying to help me out. It's nice to meet you. My name is Izuku Midoriya and you are. Hi, I'm Achako Uraraka. It's very nice to meet you also and no problem. Well I should get going. Hope to see you in classes. See ya. The girl waves goodbye as she enters the examination room. Izuku doesn't make that cringe ass face this time because he has actual experience talking to girls now. Izuku heads in also, sitting next to Bakugo. And that's when the stage hero, present Mike, makes his entrance and explains the exams. When the boy sees the hero, he gets all giddy and excited at the sight. While presenting, a blue-haired dude interrupted the voice hero and then tried to call him out. On the printout, it shows that you listed four robots instead of three. With all respect, an error on UA material is shameful, and you over there, with the messy hair. You've been muttering this whole time. Stop that. If you can't take this seriously then you should leave. That statement sort of pissed Izuku off. This dude was telling him that he wasn't taking this seriously. But he trained his ass off to get to where he is now so with determination and confidence in his voice. Izuku looks at the blue-haired kid and said, 
Hey dude, first of all, present Mike was going to explain the fourth robot until you decided to get up and rudely interrupt him. And second of all, don't tell me I'm not taking this seriously. I worked very hard to be here right now so I won't let you tell me otherwise. I will tell you otherwise. You aren't taking this seriously. You were just muttering on and on earlier. Okay Ian, that's how I think and process. If you don't like it then maybe you shouldn't focus on me. Mind your own business and pay attention to present Mike over there so we can get these examinations over with. I want to pass as much as the next guy here. Bakugo was stunned with the confidence and backbone Izuku has compared to almost a year ago. That's when the filter Bakugo had on Izuku started to crack. By looking at the boy, Bakugo could tell that Izuku is ripped and has no fear. He saw the bravado in Izuku's eyes and started asking himself, when did that stupid Deku change so much? How have I not noticed? Wait, does he have a quirk? There's no way. He will fail and get booted out. I have no doubt. People started laughing at the blue-haired boy as present Mike got back to the presentation, discussing the final robot before he was rudely interrupted. After the presentation and the written exams were finished, Izuku puts on his gi and heads to the next part of the examinations. When the rest of the examinees showed up, Izuku sees the girl that tried to help him earlier so he starts to walk up to her. That's until the same dude from earlier put his palm on the boy's shoulder and said, It looks like she's trying to focus. What are you going to do? Ruin her chances to succeed. I guess you're right. It does look like she's trying to focus. I'll just talk to her later on then. Hearing this surprised the boy. He was expecting to retort back but Izuku handled it maturely this time. Also I would like to apologize for earlier. I feel like I could have handled the situation better so I'm sorry. Izuku says as he bows down for forgiveness. Seeing this, the blue-haired boy bows down and apologizes as well. I should apologize too. I didn't know your muttering is how you analyze and process things so I would like to apologize to you as well. Right when the door cracked open, Izuku rushed in with 100% full cow, making it look like he disappeared within less than a second. A random student shouts, Hey, can he do that? It hasn't even started yet. There are no countdowns in a real countdown. Go, go, go. As the group of examinees run into the fake city, they see a dozen robots already scattered around in pieces. All of them were wondering what happened until they realized it was the green-haired kid from earlier. The only reason there weren't more destroyed was because Izuku wanted to give the other contestants a chance. Izuku hangs around and goes around helping any other examinees that are in danger or helps them get points. Without realizing it, the boy was earning more points doing so. The giant zero-point robot appeared. As everyone was running, Izuku was just staring at it, admiring how cool it looked, until he heard a girl scream. The boy looks to see where the scream was coming from and sees it was the girl he met earlier. That's when our protagonist rushes in to remove the rubble and debris. Hey, Achako, right? Are you doing alright? Can you walk? Hey, it's you. My leg is sprained so I can't walk. The girl sees the robot about to step on the duo so she tries warning the boy but Izuku just puts his hand up to prevent the robot from squishing them and pushes the robot, causing it to fall on its backside. With amazement in her voice, the girl tells the boy, Wow, you handled that like it was nothing. You're amazing. Thank you but it's not over yet. Look, Achako looks over at the robot to see that it is getting back up. Izuku picks up Achako, causing the girl to start blushing. Our protagonist flies up while holding onto Achako. He removes one hand from her as he uses the other to keep her from falling. That's when Izuku launches a massive Kai blast, shocking the girl and the other contestants that were watching. Everyone was amazed with the display. Even the teachers that were giving the students their score were pretty amazed. All Might was proud that not only his successor has drastically broken the record for villain points, but he also helped others and protected others even if he didn't have to do so in this type of situation. Present Mike announced that the examinations are over. Izuku flies back down while holding Achako and gently puts her to the ground. Recovery Girl comes by to kiss the girl's leg, healing her injury. Izuku teleports to All Might's Kai signature which surprised the proctors of the exam. Hey All Might, what's up? Wait, is that Goku over there stuffing his face? Hey Goku, did you like my display? You were super amazing. I wish I was the robot so I can fight you. Well we can fight right here, right now, if you want to. Izuku says as he gets into a fighting stance. No, 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 definitely not. You guys will end up leveling this whole entire school. All Might says not wanting to cause any damage to the school. There was shock from the other heroes as they were hoping that the number one hero was just joking. Goku gets a sad face as he goes back to his food and is happy again. The Eraser Hero, Eraser Head, walks up to the boy and stares directly into his soul, causing the boy to shiver. Good job kid. Even though you could have passed just by defeating the robots, you still decided to help and protect others. I hope to see you in my class. Don't be late. Principal Nezu looks at the Eraser Hero and says, Aizawa, you weren't supposed to tell him any of that. 
We were supposed to mail him the results, just like any other student. What? It's not like you're not going to pass him and dump him in my class anyways. So I don't think it matters if I tell him now or not. Aizawa tells Nezu and leaves the room. Izuku goes to All Might and asks him, Why are you here anyways? Did you come to watch? Well sort of, I will be teaching here now. Say hello to the new staff member of UA Academy. All Might flexes his muscles while showboating. Realizing that Goku is here also asks, Wait, why is Goku here also? Will he be teaching here too? The hero gives a laugh and tells the boy, Haha no. He won't be an official teacher here since he will be tagging along with me but he will help out. Oh my god, that's pretty awesome. I hope you get to teach our class sometime. Izuku said with excitement in his voice. The hero pats Izuku on the head as he tells him, Well young Midoriya, now that you know you passed, would you like to go out to eat later to celebrate? Yeah of course, I would love to. What type of place will we be eating out at? All Might gets confused, thinking that Izuku doesn't realize this celebration is for him. The hero wants the boy to choose for himself because it's his day so he tells him, Not sure, you tell me. We will be celebrating for you after all so you should choose where to go. When Goku hears the topic of eating, he speed blitzes and appears right by Izuku and All Might. Did you say eat out? Where are we eating? Please, I want to know. All Might tells the Saiyan, Yeah we are, not sure yet, but we will be going out later tonight. Goku gets really excited, thinking about the delicious feed he will be feasting on that night. Izuku asks the hero, Can my mom and Momo come along too? Sure thing young Midoriya, it's your day after all. All the heroes were weirded out by the dynamic of the trio. It's like Goku, Izuku, and All Might of a family dynamic of sorts. They are pretty attached to each other. Izuku uses instant transmission to teleport to Mama Midoriya and tells about the exams and that he passed. She was very happy for her son and gave him a big and loving embrace. Izuku then tells Inko that they will be going out as he lists who's going and wants her to come along. Inko agreed as she wanted to support her boy but caught off guard when Izuku brought up All Might as he had never brought him up before. Hey Izuku, may I ask, how do you personally know the number one hero? Izuku never brought up All Might to his mother as per their secret but the boy feels like she can at least meet one of the people who's been helping him throughout the month. Well mom, he trains with me and Goku a lot of times. He's also been helping me with my training as well. I wouldn't have come this far without his help. This brings joy in Inko's eyes as he's getting support from the greatest hero in Japan. Alright honey, by the way, when and where are we going? I'm not sure exactly. All Might will message me about it or Goku will just randomly show up to pick us up. If I have to be honest, it could be both. Well, life has been so weird ever since Goku showed up. Even if you are different yourself Izuku. Not in a bad way though, you just have more confidence in yourself and I'm happy to see that. I know ever since you were a child, you've had to struggle a lot but now, I'm seeing the man you're becoming. Oh boy kids sure grow up fast. And Ko gets teary eyed, thinking that Izuku will be all grown up and all on his own without his mother's help. It's alright mom, even if I'm becoming all grown up, there will never ever be anyone who could ever take your place as my mother and that's a fact. They both get teary eyed, giving each other hugs. Izuku texts Momo and asks her if she wants to hang out and she responds with, Yeah, sure thing. Just pick me up when you're ready. Goku appears using instant transmission with All Might around late afternoon right in front of Inko and Izuku while they were watching TV. The hero introduces himself to his successor's mother and Goku goes to raid the fridge. Do you have any food in here? I'm starving. The hero couldn't understand Goku's biology at all. The Saiyan is always scarfing down food whatever chance gets but the hero assumes it's a Saiyan thing. How can you still be starving? You literally had 15 full course meals during midday. Yep and there's still room for more. As the Saiyan rubs his stomach with a circle motion, All Might tells Goku. Well we are about to head out to eat anyway so you have to wait till then Goku. Ah well alright, I'll wait. Goku said with sadness and sorrow in his voice. Alright, I'm going to pick up Momo. Izuku said before putting his pointer and middle finger on his forehead. Focusing on Momo's Kai's signature and teleporting to her to pick her up. They all headed out to the restaurant. The place that Izuku decided to go to was a mom and pop burger joint. The people that were there were All Might, Goku, Izuku, Inko, and Momo. Momo was nervous because this is the first time she was meeting Izuku's mom but Inko was excited to meet the young girl as she knows this is her son's friend and possible waifu. Everyone was enjoying their food. Goku kept on eating one meal after another until the whole table was filled with plates. After everyone had a good time. The fun had to end eventually so everyone went home. During the past week, Izuku has been doing some training with Goku and All Might. After a week, Izuku finally got his UA letter. He already knew he passed but decided to open the letter anyways to see what it says. That's when a hologram video of All Might appears, giving a summary of what he already knew and being told that he was first place.
Hello and welcome everyone to part 6 of the series, What If Goku Trained Deku? If you guys are enjoying this what if, then please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos down the line. I hope you all enjoy and peace out. The day has come for Izuku Midoriya to take his first step to becoming a great hero. He got accepted to the school of his dreams with ease and is ready to take on what's next. Izuku flies off to the direction of the school to meet up with Momo before heading to class. When he reaches the school gate, he waits there until Momo gets there. When she gets there, they talk while heading to class together. Izuku makes it up to the door to his classroom and notices how large it is. He walks into the class to see the blue-haired dude yelling at Bakugo. Get your feet off the desk. You're disrespecting school property. Bakugo was getting annoyed by this dude bothering him so he said, You're kidding me, right? Did your school shove a stick up your ass or do you just enjoy having it there? The boy was stunned to hear that so he tried to make amends by starting over. Let's start over. I'm Tenya Ida from Salme Private Academy. So you think you're better than me? Well, I'm going to enjoy tearing you a new one Bakugo said, threatening the boy. Izuku made a joke saying, Kachin, I didn't know you swung that way. Are you coming out of the closet? I'm proud of you. Shut your stupid fucking face hole, you worthless piece of walking human garbage Deku. Bakugo shouted to Izuku. When Ida saw Izuku, he introduced himself to the green-haired boy. Good morning. My name is Tenya Ida. It's very nice to formally meet you. You were amazing at the examinations. Izuku introduces himself as well. Hey it's you. It's great to see you too. I'm glad to see that you were able to pass as well. You knew that there was something more to the practical exam. As a student, you're far superior to me. Ada says to Izuku, praising him for his accomplishments. Yeah, no, I thought stopping the robots was the only way of passing. It was until I listened to the letter that I found out that protecting and helping others earned me additional points. So, you were helping people out of kindness. That's pretty admirable. You will truly make an excellent hero. During their conversation, Bakugo looks at the boy and looks away, having a flashback monologue. When Izuku was at his middle school, both him and Bakugo were called into the office to talk to the teacher about getting into UA. The teacher congratulates Izuku and Bakugo for getting into UA. When Bakugo heard that Izuku got into UA, he was pissed off so he confronted Izuku after school and tried to push him into the wall, but Izuku wasn't moving. Now Bakugo is getting very angry. What did you do to pass the exam Deku? You must have cheated somehow. Bakugo was about to swing at Izuku but he grabs Bakugo's arm and starts squeezing it. The boy looked directly into Bakugo's eyes and said, Listen Kachin, I think you need to hear this. I'm not the same weak, quirkless kid you knew before. Over the past 10 months, things haven't been the same. My life took a drastic change and it was for the better because someone told me I can be a hero and someone else believed in me when no one else did, and because of them, I have a chance of becoming a hero. So like it or not Kachin I will be going to UA and I will become a hero. After getting his point across, he let go of Bakugo and walked away. Bakugo was shocked and was in pain at how Izuku gripped his arm. He is wondering what the hell happened to him throughout these months. Back to the present. Achako Yuraka came into the class and when she saw Izuku, she struck up a conversation with the boy. Hey I recognize that messed up hair. You're the guy who saved me. You were so cool. The way you carried me up into the sky and shot that really powerful energy blast with ease. That was amazing. When Momo heard that Izuku carried a different girl, she kind of got jealous. She doesn't really understand why she feels that way and tries to push her feelings away. When Bakugo hears that Izuku destroyed a zero-pointer robot with ease, he gets very pissed off. Deku, what did I hear? You destroyed a zero-point robot. There's no way a loser like you can accomplish such a feat, even if you've been working out. Bakugo was about to attack Izuku until Aizawa woke up from his nap, erasing Bakugo's quirk and grabbed him with his scarf. If you cause a disruption in my class like that again, I will be happy to expel you. As for the rest of you, it took you a few minutes to shut up, how disappointing. If none of you can take this seriously, then I recommend packing your crap and getting out. Bakugo saw the red crimson eyes and was frightened and did not want to get expelled. He went back to his seat. Izuku went to take the seat next to Momo. Aizawa instructs the students, all right, go to the locker rooms and put on these gym uniforms and head outside. While changing, a red spiky-haired dude struck up a conversation with our main character. Wow dude, you are hella ripped. Such a manly body. I'm so jealous. What type of training did you do? Hey man and thanks. Honestly, I wouldn't know how I would describe my training to you. It's pretty surreal and intense. Everyone gets changed and goes to the field. The eraser hero announces, All right class, we will be doing a quirk assessment test so we test your current capability. The class was confused on why they have to do a quirk assessment test and that's when Yuraka asks the hero, What about orientation? You can't waste time on pointless ceremonies if you want to make it to the big league. In this school, I'm not tethered to traditions so I'm able to teach my class however I see fit. You have all been taking standardized tests. 
but you haven't got to use your quirks and physical exams before. Midoriya, you got the highest score in the whole school, making All Might's score looking like child's play. The entire class was shocked to hear that Izuku demolished All Might's record. When Bakugo heard that, he got visibly angry and tried to run at Izuku with explosions sparking from his arm. That's when Aizawa grabbed onto Bakugo with his scarf and erased his quirk. Then he told Bakugo that this was his last chance, so he went back into the line. Aizawa looks back at Izuku, giving him his attention as he throws the ball to the boy. All right back to it. Midoriya, I want you to throw this as far as you can with your quirk. Worried about the damage he could cause, Izuku tells the hero, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Using 100% of my full power could cause a lot of damage to the surrounding area. Yes, now hurry up. You're wasting our time and if you do cause damage to the surrounding area, the school will be able to deal with it. Izuku screams, powering up his energy as much as he can. The entire class and Aizawa see this green. Unruly energy surround the boy, as he uses 100% of one for all and then shouts Kaioken times three. Izuku throws the ball, causing a massive shockwave that blows everyone away. And I mean literally and figuratively. The impact of the shockwave caused all the reinforced glass of Yue to completely shatter away. After that amazing display, it showed that Izuku achieved a score of infinity. The other students and teachers in the school were freaking out thinking that the school could be under attack. Goku felt the immense power that was building up so he used his Kai sensing to observe what was going on. The whole entire class was left awestruck. Even Momo was, as she has never actually seen the boy's true power. Even Aizawa was speechless. He knew the kid was strong but he didn't know Izuku was a freaking beast. When Bakugo saw the power that was being displayed, he was speechless and started to feel fear. He was too stunned to even do or say anything so he just dropped on his knees and started internally screaming. The filter Bakugo has on Izuku keeps on shattering more and more as he starts to remember the same flashback from earlier. How? How? How the hell are you so goddamn powerful Deku? You bastard. Bakugo screams and punches the ground, grabbing everyone's attention. I told you Kachin, I'm not the same weak, corkless kid you knew before. Izuku responded to the boy. Bakugo didn't have anything else to say. Once he realized that Izuku was on a whole different level compared to him, he didn't have anything else to say. Even Aizawa was stunned. Not even he could have expected something as insane as that. He thinks to himself no wonder why he was worried. He has such astonishing power and all the damage he caused was insane. At least I don't have to worry about cleaning this mess up. Eraserhead shows the class the score Izuku got and it was infinity. Almost everyone was awestruck. After seeing that amazing display, the majority of the class were excited and amazed while some like Bakugo and Todoroki couldn't believe what they were seeing with their very own eyes. We get to use our quirks. This is going to be so much fun. Hearing that caught the teacher's attention. So you think this is fun, huh? Do you think being a hero is about games and playtime? You know what, whoever comes in last will get expelled immediately. Some people in the class started freaking out and Achako said to the teacher, That isn't fair. We just got here. Aizawa retorted back by telling the class, The world is full of unfairness. It's a hero's job to combat that unfairness. If you want to become a pro hero, then you will need to push yourself. So go beyond, plus ultra. For the quirk assessment, Izuku washes everyone no diff. He comes in first place with everyone else following suit and this just makes Bakugo more angry. Not just at the boy but also at himself for being weaker than Izuku. After the assessment, Aizawa tells the class, Alright, time to give you all your results. Winta, you came in last place. Go to the principal's office, you're expelled. Momo chimes in and tells the hero, I thought you were just joking to make sure everyone tries their best. The class tries to convince Aizawa to let Minda stay, but he doesn't care, so Minda walks to the principal's office. Why god why? Why have you forsaken me? Now I can't become a hero to see all the pretty girls. Minda makes it to the office and gets his expulsion papers. Right, when he was about to leave the campus, Aizawa came up behind Minda. Hello Minda, you are now reinstated back into UA Academy. Congratulations. Don't squander this second chance because you won't be given another. Minda cries as he thanks the teacher for reinstating him while thinking to himself. This is such a cruel way of teaching me a lesson. By the end of class, everyone gets ready to leave. Izuku wanted to talk to Momo for a minute before he heads off to do his training with Goku and All Might. While the two were talking, Ida and Achako came up to the pair to strike up a conversation with them. Hiroraka wanted to know why Bakugo called him Deku so he told her, We used to be childhood friends. I was quirkless until two months ago. When Kachin developed his quirk, his attitude changed and then he started bullying me. He used the term Deku to put me down. Hearing the history between the two stunned Momo, Yuraka, and Ida, Momo realizes that she doesn't know Izuku's full story so she might ask him more about it some other time. That's when Yuraka decides that Deku will no longer have that meaning. I'm sorry, I didn't know that but you know what? I like the name Deku and I think it sounds kind of cute and would be a great name for a hero. 
Izuku looks at the girl and smiles, saying, Well you can call me Deku if you'd like then. Ida chimed in and said, Didn't you say that it was an insult? Well yeah, but you heard her, Deku is now a name for a hero. Momo starts kind of getting territorial, she doesn't understand why though. You know what, before I do my training, let me fly you guys home. Izuku positions himself Superman style and asks everyone to hop on. Momo being concerned, asks, would that really be alright? Wouldn't we be too heavy for you to carry on yourself like that? I'm pretty sure you know pretty well that not even if you guys were 500 pounds plus, it still wouldn't even be heavy for me Izuku said back to his friend with a smile. Alright Ida and Yuraraka, tell me where you guys live so I can drop you guys off at your homes. He proceeds to take Ida and Yuraraka home as they enjoy the free amazing ride they were experiencing. When he dropped off Momo last, she gave the boy a big hug. This surprised Izuku but he hugged her back. Well Momo, gotta go. I'll meet up with you tomorrow so I can fly you to school. Hearing that made the girl go red as she would get to ride on Izuku and have him all to herself. Not in the way you people are thinking so chill out. Izuku uses instant transmission to get All Might so they can train with Goku. The next day, Izuku meets up with Momo so they can head to school together. In school, they did their general studies and then it was time for their hero studies. While waiting for their teacher, All Might appears saying I am here, coming through the door like a hero. The class gets excited to see the number one hero teaching their class today. The hero tells the students to meet them at the training ground so they can do their next test. That's when Tsuyu Asui mentioned the hero's Silver Age costume with an alteration. All Might added Goku's kanji onto the middle so he can show respect to his friend and recent master. Everyone heads to the locker rooms to change into their hero costume. Izuku was given a costume by his mother but also added Goku's kanji on there to show respect. Momo saw Izuku and went up to him, complimenting his costume and so did Yuraraka. Izuku couldn't help but check out both of the girls as their costumes were providing fan service. When Izuku glanced at Momo's chest, he got hypnotized by her tatas. He was staring at them for a whole minute straight until Momo smacked him in the head and turned away blushing but had a slight smile underneath, making sure no one else notices. But All Might does. Yuraraka notices that Izuku has the same kanji that All Might has. So she asks the boy about it. Hey, Deku, may I ask, why do you and All Might have the same kanji? This caught the hero and boy off guard but Izuku answered. Well, it's because All Might and I have been training under the same person for almost a year now. We are training and sparring partners. The kanji is to show homage to the person that's been training us. Hearing that caught Beku go off guard. That stupid Deku has been training with All Might. Since when? How? Why? The class starts surrounding All Might and Izuku, asking a bunch of questions of their relationship and master. None of them knew besides some teachers and Momo All Might and Izuku train with each other under the same person. That's when All Might shuts down the class's questions so he can go on with his test. When the hero explained the test, he started to draw teams and the first two teams to go against each other are Izuku and Yuraraka versus Bakugo and Yuraraka asks Izuku what the plan will be. Well, knowing Kachin, he will head straight towards me. I can teleport or fly to the bomb and outspeed Ida if he becomes a problem so I think we can end this right when it starts but to be honest with you, I don't want to do that. I want to fight Kachin, and after that, I will help you with Ida. The right Deku, sounds like a plan, Iraraka says as she gives the boy a numb look. All Might announces the start of the battle trials. When Izuku and Iraraka went into the building, Bakugo rushed his way down to confront Izuku. Bakugo tried to do a sneak attack with an explosion but Izuku grabbed Bakugo and threw him against the wall, but the explosion did burn Izuku's mask. Izuku got into the same fighting stance to prepare for another attack from Bakugo. How? Just how? What the hell? Fucking Deku. Remember I told you, I am not the same helpless kid you knew. Not even close. So call me Deku if you like because like my friend Achako said, Deku is the name of a hero. Izuku said with no fear and determination. Hearing this made Yuraraka feel some type of way. Momo is kind of annoyed having to see those two be so close with each other to the point that other students and even All Might can sense it. Damn young Midoriya, you're such a player now. I'm proud of you. All Might cries tears of joy. While Bakugo and Izuku fight, Yuraraka goes to look for the bomb. Bakugo tries to rush into another attack but Izuku just starts dodging them all. God fucking damn it. If I can't hit you, then I'll burn you into ash. Bakugo with his stored up sweat, launches a devastating blast towards Izuku, but he takes the attack like a beast with only the top half of his costume being burned off, showing off his physique. Most of the girls were admiring how well built Izuku is. Are you done yet Kachin? Hearing that question pissed off Bakugo as he launched the same attack again with his other gauntlet but that left still left Izuku unfazed as he rushed in to gives Bakugo a gut punch. Bakugo drops to his knees, spitting out blood, as he says, Deku, you bastard, there's no way you've been quirkless all this time. Jesus you're such a tsundere, go fuck yourself Deku, 
Well, so you know, I only got my quirk two months ago. But even before then, I've been training my ass off to become a hero. To be honest, I haven't even used my quirk against you. I've been using my own strength as if I were quirkless. There's no way. There is just no way you haven't been using your quirk against me. Bakugo shouted, not believing what Izuku's saying. All of the students are watching, not knowing if that's really true or not. You saw me use my quirk before Kachin. You saw how powerful I am with my quirk so do you think I'm lying now? Alright, I'm done here. I'm going to go help out Achako but before I do, Izuku speed blitzes Bakugo and wraps him around with capture tape, causing him to get disqualified from the match. When Ida heard that, he went to prepare himself for whatever may come. Izuku uses instant transmission to teleport to Yuraka and covers the girl's mouth so she doesn't scream and expose their location. Hey, don't worry, it's me. Achako calms down when she realizes it was just Izuku. So you already beat Bakugo, you are amazing. So what's the plan now? Izuku thinks of a plan. Well we can teleport right behind Ida and I can keep him occupied while you grab the bomb. Alright Deku, sounds like a plan. Let's do this. The girl said excitedly while giving a thumbs up. Alright hold my hand, I'll teleport us right behind him. Momo is still feeling some type of way while watching. Izuku uses instant transmission, teleporting right behind Ida with Yuraka and kicks the speedster out of the way before he would have the time to react. That's when Yuraka grabbed the bomb. Winning the match, Bakugo was sitting there in disbelief. It's like reality has shattered into a million pieces and he doesn't know what to do. He felt very angry, but there was a small glint of admiration and pride for the green-haired boy. A pride for someone else he has never felt before and he wants to surpass the power that Izuku has and prove he will be the best hero. No matter what, after the match, the rest of the class was awestruck. They couldn't believe what they saw. Even Todoroki couldn't help but admire Izuku. After their match, the rest of the matches went on. But the difference is that everyone else's matches were filled with passion after seeing Izuku's match. When the battle trials finished, all the students went to change back into their classroom to do their afternoon courses. After school, Bakugo confronts Izuku and friends. Getting the sense that Bakugo rather talk alone than in front of the others, he goes up to the explosive blonde and asks what's up. I want you to show me how you got so strong. I'm sorry, what? Say that again. Izuku said sarcastically. God fucking damn it Deku. Show me how you got so goddamn strong. Alright, take a chill pill. I'll help you get stronger, but it won't be easy. On one of our days off, I'll swing by your house so we can start our training. Bakugo grunts and walks away. What is up everyone? Welcome to the season 1 finale of What If Goku Trained Deku. It is crazy that we managed to make it this far into the story. If you guys want me to continue the series then make sure to destroy the subscribe button to show me that you want more. I hope you guys do enjoy the video and have a good time. From where we left off, Bakugo was washed by Izuku. After their fight, he realized how outclassed he was compared to Izuku, and not just him. Bakugo saw the other students exams and saw that there were others that outclassed him also. Yes he was angry but there was this sense of pride, a pride for Izuku. Bakugo can no longer view Izuku as the same weakling he knew because that is no longer the case so he pushes past his pride and asks the green haired boy if he can train him. I'm skipping the class president stuff. While Izuku and friends were eating during their lunch period, Izuku sensed a sinister key nearby and that's when the school alarm started blaring off, warning everyone of a level 3 security breach. When Izuku uses instant transmission to teleport to where key was, there was no one there but reporters trying to rush into the school. Then the boy teleported to Aizawa to warn him about the situation. When Izuku used instant transmission to teleport to the Eraser Hero, Aizawa got startled for a minute there because he was not expecting that. Jesus Christ kid. You scared me for a second there. What are you doing here anyways? Shouldn't you be at lunch with the rest of your class? Izuku warns Aizawa of the sinister energy he felt. Yeah sorry sensei but there is something urgent that I need to warn you about. Alright Midoriya, what is it? Well it's about the level 3 breach. I felt a sinister energy right before the alarm started going off. When I used my teleportation ability to go to that energy source, it was already gone. I don't think this whole thing is an accident. There might be something going on. Izuku tells the eraser hero. What do you mean you felt a sinister key? The hero asked in curiosity. Well I can sense the life force of others and I can sense where they are depending on how powerful they are or in this case, the evil energy was very sinister enough for me to sense it. The hero thanks Izuku for warning him. All right Midoriya, I'll trust what you're saying and I will warn Principal Nezu. Thank you for telling me. 
When everyone goes back to class, Ida ends up being class representative. After that whole thing, Aizawa announces their rescue training. Everyone goes to put on their costumes but Izuku's was completely burned off so he is wearing his gi. Momo rushes up to Izuku and they talk to each other about the type of rescue training they will be doing. That's when Uraka comes up to Izuku and asks him why he was wearing his gi instead of his hero costume. When everyone hops on the bus, they all start talking to each other. While everyone was talking, Suyu Asui asked our main character Hey Midoriya, I have a question, who is the person you and all might train with? This caught everyone's attention as they all turned to Izuku to see what he would say. Not knowing what to say because Goku's origins sound too unreal, so he tells them, well, we've been training with a guy called Son Goku. You guys may have seen him hanging around with All Might. He even wears the same gi that I am wearing now. Kirishima chimes in and says, that's so cool. There's someone that even All Might trains under? He must be very strong if he also trains All Might. He sure is Kirishima, he sure is strong. Sometimes I wonder if I will ever surpass him because his power literally transcends the gods. Mina joins in the conversation and says, transcends the gods? I think you are exaggerating. Izuku tells Mina, I'm not. I'm literally strong enough to blow up a planet, but this dude is universal. He literally has two god forms and one other form that is beyond the gods. There's no way this guy could be that strong Deku. I may acknowledge your power but you can't expect the rest of us to believe all of that. Bakugo shouts at Izuku, not understanding the actual truth. You will see for yourself soon Kaken, and trust me, you'll be amazed yourself. The bus stops at the USJ and that's when Aizawa tells everyone to shut up and they make it to the entrance to see All Might and the Pro Hero 13. As the students walk into the USJ, 13 talks about the trials and how dangerous quirks can be, but that's when All Might and Izuku sensed multiple energies appear all at once and a very large and menacing energy. Shigaraki and Kurogiri know of All Might and Izuku's power so the first thing Shigaraki does is to order Kurogiri to warp all the students around the USJ besides the heroes and Izuku. All Might and Izuku Midoriya, we are here to kill you. Nomu. Kill them both. Izuku tries to use instant transmission to locate and teleport everyone out of there but the Nomu rushes in, punching Izuku to the other side of the building. Ouch, what is up with this guy? How can he be this strong? When All Might saw this, he got pissed and rushed towards the Nomu, giving him a powerful punch, but the Nomu was able to absorb the punch with ease. Izuku rushed back in with 100% full cowling but the Nomu had the edge. You think you can defeat my Nomu so easily? What a joke. This thing was designed to kill you. And you know the best part? It even knows how to use ki. Shigaraki starts to laugh maniacally while the Nomu is beating on Izuku. All Might rushes in, moving Izuku out of the way. Izuku is hurt but he is able to get up and move. Young Midoriya. I will handle this creature. Get all the students out of here. I can't just leave you. You heard that maniac, that thing was made to kill me at my full power. You're not strong enough to handle him. Aizawa yells at Izuku saying, listen to him. You are the only one who could get everyone out of here with your teleportation ability. Go and save the rest of your classmates now. Izuku doesn't want to leave the heroes to deal with that monster, but they're right. He is the only one who can effectively save the students, so he uses 100% full cowling and kaiken times 3 and speed blitzes, grabbing every student, and placing them at the entrance. Alright everyone. Make sure you grab onto me. A few people such as Bakugo and Todoroki were trying to refuse so they could defeat some villains but Izuku shuts them down and forces them to go with him. They all teleport to Nezu's office and Izuku warns the principal to send help to the USJ. Shigaraki was mad, he wanted to make a few students suffer, but he let go of it because All Might's already there. Izuku was about to teleport back but Ida tried to stop him. No Midoriya. I know what you're planning to do. You can't go back there. I have to Ida, All Might won't be able to defeat that thing on his own. You don't know that Midoriya. All Might is the number one hero. He can do it. Trust me Ida, he can't do it, at least not alone. All Might is trying to fight the Nomu but all it does is absorbs its attacks. It even knows how to shoot energy blasts and it's damaging All Might badly. He tries using his Max Kaiken but it isn't doing much. Aizawa and 13 are dealing with the rest of the fodder. The Nomu shoots a compressed key blast through the hero as he drops to a knee and spits blood, but that's when everyone heard full cowling, destructo disc times 5. The attack came from Izuku as he teleported back to help All Might. The destructo disc was actually able to sever the Nomu's arm but it was able to regenerate its arm. That's when we hear Shigaraki laughing like a madman. Nomu has many quirks. One of them you might have noticed already was shock absorption and the one you just saw was regeneration. But you know what the best part is? He can even use Ki. You won't be defeating him so easily. He was literally created to handle you and All Might. He was created? So this thing is not a living person? Thanks for letting me know. That's all I need. All Might. 
I need you to distract the Nomu for at least five minutes. I think you know what I'm going to do. Izuku tells the hero, hoping his plan will work. All right, young Midoriya, they'll handle him until you make the spirit bomb. Aizawa and 13. I need you to prevent anyone from coming after me, it will be easier for me to do this if I stay focused. Izuku tells the other heroes. Aizawa was hesitant on what Izuku might be planning but he has no other choice to trust the boy so he makes sure to stop any villains as 13 follows suit. Izuku raises his hands in the air. Shigaraki shouts, what the hell are you doing? You know what? I think I'll just kill you myself. Kurogiri, use warp gate and send me to the brat. A portal appears right next to Izuku, Shigaraki was about to disintegrate him with his quirk, but Aizawa erases Shigaraki's quirk, as Izuku's kick stomps him. The Nomu may be as strong as Izuku but Shigaraki sure isn't. The Nomu is beating on All Might hard, and I mean like very hard. Not in the way you guys are thinking. It's like when Piccolo was distracting Frieza while Goku was charging up a spirit bomb. That's when Shigaraki ordered the Nomu to attack Izuku. All Might, beaten down, wanted to stop the Nomu but he wasn't fast or strong enough. The Nomu rushed towards Izuku, shoving his face down the ground, making him eat dirt. Izuku screams, trying to power up to his max in order to get this creature off of him to only do some small damage that would be healed anyways. The Nomu is just too powerful. All Might with the energy he had left tried to rush in to save Izuku but Kurogiri used his warp gate quirk to send him back but that's when 13 was able to sneak behind the Nomu and use her quirk black hole, but Kurogiri used his quirk warp gate against her, causing her to end up getting severely damaged. Shigaraki laughs maniacally. None of you can defeat my Nomu. Now it's time to die, All Might. Shigaraki orders Kurogiri to warp him to All Might, and the villain disintegrates the hero's right arm. All Might was bleeding and was about to die. Oh boy, he shouldn't have done that, especially where Izuku can see. After that there was just silence, but that's when everyone hears a massive roar. Izuku screams, the rage is pushing him beyond his normal limits, even Aizawa was scared. Powering up to 1 million percent, Izuku also shouts the Kaiken and completely vaporizes the Nomu with an energy blast. Then he looked at Shigaraki, speed blitzed towards his direction, and created a key blade and sliced off his hand. Goku gave Izuku the last of his senzu beans in case of emergencies. Izuku gave one to All Might, and passed out, body completely damaged. He just couldn't handle the strain of pushing beyond his limits. When All Might gets healed, he gives the last three senzu beans they had to Izuku, Aizawa, and 13. Luckily everyone survived due to that a spool from Izuku, but there are no more senzu beans left. No. 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 My hand. My Nomu. So much pain. There was no way you should have defeated my Nomu. Master made it specially to kill you all. I call hacks. Kurogiri gets us out of here. Shit. 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 This won't be the last time. Izuku got back up after eating the senzu bean. Aizawa was confused on what that bean was but 13 was unconscious so all might have to crush the bean and help her swallow it. Goku felt the immense power so he used instant transmission to see what was going on, just to see all the damage, but everyone was fine. Hey guys. What happened? I felt Izuku's key rocket up so I came as soon as I could. All Might told the Scion, Goku, I wished you were here earlier. We were attacked by villains and there was this creature that was stronger than me and young Midoriya. I'm sorry, if I knew, I would have come sooner, but I was training so I didn't think much of it. Goku apologizes to the hero for not showing up sooner. Yeah, Goku. Wish you could have come here sooner. I had to push beyond my limits and we all had to eat the last of the senzu beans so there aren't any more. I'm sorry guys. Next time I will make sure to come sooner if anything happens again. Goku goes and gives All Might and Izuku a hug. After getting brutally dominated, All Might asks Goku a question. Hey Goku, whenever I get a chance, can we train in the time chamber again? After that fight, I see that there will always be someone else getting stronger. There will always be someone more powerful, so I need to keep on getting stronger. I agree with All Might. I had to push beyond my limits and almost destroy my body just to try to defeat that creature. Even though I won, I never felt so helpless since we first met and I don't ever want to feel that way again. Aizawa joined the conversation as well. Hey, can you train me too? I think we all need to get stronger here if we have to deal with threats like this again. And I don't want to have to rely on our students again to save the day. Sure thing guys, but I will push you beyond your limits. I will train you harder than before. And Aizawa, you haven't trained with us before, but I will help you catch up and I will push you beyond your limits. I'm prepared for that. I wouldn't be a hero if I don't do what it takes to protect my students and the rest of the world. When Aizawa said that, Goku smiled and gave him a pat on the back. The heroes and police came to arrest all the fodder that were defeated. Detective Tsukuchi questions the students and then goes on to talk to All Might with Izuku and Goku around. 
They tell him what happened during the USJ attack and the detective scolds Izuku for getting involved but understands that without him, there would be no survivors. When nighttime hits, Izuku was about to leave the school to be surprised that Momo, Uraka, and Ida were waiting for him. Hey Deku you're here. Are you doing okay? Tell us what happened. Momo rushed towards Izuku, crying her eyes out as she rubbed her face against his chest. You made me worried. Why would you do something like that? But I'm glad you're okay. The girl looked up at the boy and gave him a smile while still crying. Izuku decides he will walk home with his friends today and that's the end of season 1 of what of Goku trained Deku. If any of you have enjoyed this series so far, then make sure you kill the like and subscribe button with bell notifications on. Your support will tell me if I should even continue the series then go beyond plus ultra and destroy the like and subscribe button.